John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him, being baptized by him in the Jordan River, as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. I do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing flame is at his hand. He will clear the threshing floor and gather the wheat into the barn. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. one who repeats the lesson, and I think that's important, so I just want to pull this out right now. And this is? What is this? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, okay? We're going to continue to talk about the Holy Spirit as we move on here. And... Uh, as my brother Jim says, who's a double board certified surgeon, I may not be fast, but I'm slow. So, uh, <laughs> so we want to continue to uh, open ourselves to the message, and obviously the Holy Spirit has, uh, wants to teach us on and on and on. A, a, a word I shared and talked with you uh, perhaps a month ago, a month and a half ago, was religion. Do you remember what religion means? Anybody? religion, to bind back to. So, religion is, we come from out there, but we bind ourselves back to this altar and the covenant of God. So that's what religion is all about. And the Holy Spirit does that for us and helps us with that. In our first reading, we read about the Isaiah prophecy for peace and God's concord coming to the world. And we read how many different things, but one I wanted to focus on, how the, the wolf will be the guest of the lamb. And just to think about the imagery of, of the wolf, you know, the wolf is violent and can kill. And the lamb, we think, is very vulnerable. And uh, obviously, we transfer that to the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, offering his life for forgiveness for our sins, for reconciliation that we can become one family of God. And the wolf, which can be us, we can be very violent. We can kill each other with our words, our stares, our judgment, our unforgiveness. We'll be a guest of that lamb who will offer himself for us. And that's good news from our first reading. And then John the Baptist in the gospel says, Repent! Repent. Meaning to turn away from and turn to. So you turn off the TV. You turn off the media. You turn away from that and then you turn to the Lord in the scriptures, or in the poor, or one another, how we do that and serve. And he says, if you do that, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. You will receive the Holy Spirit, and you will receive the fire from the Lord. And we have to commit to that. We have to covenant as Christ's covenant to us. He invites us to that covenant. 
I can't make you do that, you can't make me do that, but I have to commit to that in my life and getting up early each morning and spending time in that covenantal relationship where the wolf, me, comes to the Lamb who's forgiven me from my sins and wants to teach me about the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, Oregon is kind of a famous state right now on the women's basketball college scene because we have two Native Americans, don't we, from Umatilla, Oregon Reservation, Shoney and Jude Schimmel. And uh, they made it to a championship game last year in, in the NCAAs. And the story about them was that their mom and dad kind of met, but they never got married. And so it goes that the mom promised, like, if the, the kids beat this Baylor team, like, you know, before the finals, with perhaps the best basketball player ever, women's basketball player on the planet Earth, that she would marry the, the father of the children. Well, they won, and then they got married. And then in the, uh, when, uh, after they won the game, the, one of the daughters, Jude, she was crying. But she wasn't crying because they beat Baylor. She was crying because her mom and dad got married. Because she wants covenant. We all want covenant. We want to be bound back to. And we have to repent to do that. You ready for a challenge? How many of you would raise your hand and say, yeah, I'm a sinner? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> and do we act like it? When's the last time you've been in confession? A lot of Catholics say, yeah, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. But do we go to confession? Someone just confessed to me today in confession said, this is so much different than just asking God for forgiveness. Amen? Yeah. It's real. It's powerful. So don't let's not say that we're something and not act like it. So, next Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, communal reconciliation service. Come. Do you know what would happen when a, a lamb was lost and the shepherd went out for it? When the shepherd came home, the whole community was waiting. And then lamb would come in and the whole community goes, Yes! The lamb has been found! Can you imagine the scene? That's, that was for a lamb, a physical lamb. And what happens for us when we come back. So this covenant... The covenant of the wolf coming to the lamb and lying, being able to, to abide with the lamb in peace. The wolf who can be violent and who can kill come to the lamb who offers his life for us so that we might know what the life that he's come to, to give. I want to talk about two repenters tonight. The first one is hard to get away from Pope Francis, but purported reported, I don't know if it's true, but I won't put it past him, that Pope Francis, lo and behold, is sneaking out of the Vatican at night, <laughs> dressed as a priest, and, you know, just like me, like a, you know, a, a priest, just a normal, everyday priest, and finding homeless people to have a meal with. Wow. And I won't put it past him. It's been either de denied or confirmed, but I won't put that past him. So he's leaving the comfort of home, of a warm bed, and he's going out to the poor to feed him. Does that sound, sound like someone else to you? Jesus left the comfort of his warm bed, his home, and he came to earth for poor people to teach us the peace and the life that he wanted to give us, to save us from our sin. It's the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that I was able to come up with that connection because I don't come up with that connection. Isn't it exciting, the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit can take us and what the Holy Spirit can do for us? And then the second repenter I want to talk about is my brother Mike. He just sent this in the mail. Mike's 18 months older than me. And Mike's been praying every day since he's been 20, 18 years old. And Mike goes to confession. And Mike does a lot of repenting. Repenting, remains, remember, means turning away from that which is not God to Jesus. And when we repent, we get the gift and the fire of the Holy Spirit as we do that. So my brother Mike, we had a mutual family friend, Eddie. I shared with you about him before. Eddie was having stomach problems and just tired. Uh, 
about five, six years ago, they couldn't understand what was going on, and then finally they figured it out. And Eddie was at 48 at this point, that he had pancreatic cancer, and he died a month later. And Eddie was a wonderful, wonderful man, worked in ministry out here in Oregon, beautiful voice, beautiful singer, and uh, was uh, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died a month later. So that was a few years ago. And so um, my brother uh, decided just recently to have a conversation with Eddie, and I want to share it with you. This comes from the Holy Spirit. It's just beautiful. I'm led to share an experience that I hope will give you hope. In prayer on All Souls a few weeks ago, I had the sense to visit with Eddie, asking him how he was, that we miss him. He fumbles for words, hesitates, chuckles. Knowing my thoughts, he then strains for grammar. I thought, this is weird. Come on, speak, man. Saint. He smiles, a smile of welcoming, understanding, of patience. And then he says something that rocked me. We speak love here. I took a second hearing and realized that Eddie was out of practice, awkward with our words, with our language. His, their whole existence, is an inexhaustible and constant sending and receiving of love, a profound and new way of being. He dips and drinks deeper. He gives the very love of God, always new and never less. Embraced, whole, growing. Words will not work. They no longer need to. Words are rendered useless. Love is all, and it is all Him. No more posturing, pain, strain, analysis, greed, worry or grief nor discord, no regrets, nor planning, nor fatigue, no pride. With him and in him and through him, our languages are dead, once used to navigate God thin lives. It is now his way, love. No else is needed. All is better than well. A community of saints. In an instant, I will know you and be known by you. From conception through the work of salvation and the death of his body raised to the eternal, it is only natural and fitting that praise will be naturally the completion and continuation of our encounter in heaven, our communion. If our meeting is a breath in, praise will naturally flow as we exhale. Not just with me, not just Eddie, but again and again, ever new, with all the saints of history. We will have no need to utter a word, any phrase, we will be known even as we know, beauty and delight, exhilaration beyond any of that on this earth ever knew. His language is love. I hope this brings you the same comfort it has as me. Heaven, I anticipate and look forward to this and getting to spend it with you. Wow. That's the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. And the more we give our lives to the Holy Spirit, the more this kind of stuff comes out of us. The more we repent, the more we turn, the more fire, and the more Holy Spirit. And not just on December 14th, next Saturday morning as we gather. And Jesus waits. And he invites us in. And the invitation is it is. It's the covenant each day. The wolf with the lamb. Holy Spirit and fire. Pope Francis. My brother Mike. Becoming.
Let us stand and confess our faith. I believe.